We have reprobates who have contributed nothing to this country and are tearing it down. Um, these are people with very little experience, very little substance, but have been radicalized. And they're enjoying the limelight, the self-aggrandizement, and they are clearly narcissists. So they keep pounding away at the U.S. Supreme Court. Why? Because they want to break it. They want the Supreme Court to become a, basically a left-wing functionary. The court is not allowed to be independent. And so if it rules against what the radical left demands, abortion on demand, abortion in the last second, that is a killing of a baby under the science. Even Roe didn't permit that in the last three months. And it's an amazing thing, the Casey decision that came later, 1992, uh, it was Planned Parenthood versus Casey, the governor of Pennsylvania. He was a Democrat, he was quite moderate, and he was openly and aggressively pro-life. He was a practicing Catholic. And he lost that case. Uh, he's the one who signed the bill that placed some limits on abortion in Pennsylvania. His son, who really was not that well known but used his father's name, got elected to the U.S. Senate in 2006 and has been serving there ever since. And he ran as a moderate and he ran as anti-abortion and pro-life. And he's moved, let's see, for the camera, he's moved that way left. He voted with all the other Democrats except Manchin for the most radical possible law of the land when it comes to abortion. It would have blown out every single state limitation. It would have imposed abortion on demand in every corner of the country. And that is abortion in the last second of birth. It would have eliminated the conscious um, exemption for doctors and nurses. That is, you have to uh, abort the child if that's what you're told to do according to the government, according to the patient. You can't say, wait, my face says no. They didn't care. All that would have been thrown out. And this guy, Casey, the son, voted for that. And he put out a statement. He put out a statement trashing what the Supreme Court had done in the Dobbs decision. And so I remind people, the Casey decision and the Roe decision that the Supreme Court reversed, that Casey decision was named after his father. His father lost the case. His father would be thrilled with what the Supreme Court did. His father would be disgusted by his son, as am I. That is Bob Casey Jr. What a disgusting disgrace. So let's take a look at this, go. Uh, many of us have never been arrested for anything, but this is something that we all care. Don't they look frightened? They got their hair done and they're smiling and in their best clothes for the cameras. What a pathetic joke. Go ahead. We will do whatever is necessary to protect people and their bodies. And this is one of the... You're not protecting people and their bodies. You're not even acknowledging little babies. You're not protecting people in their bodies. And furthermore, if somebody wants an abortion, they'll get an abortion. It's that simple. It's that upsetting. Go ahead. That we will engage in to make sure that those who have the ability to um, have control over their bodies and have historically will be able to do so in the future. You know, you have control over your bodies. You don't have to get pregnant. You don't have to be with a man. May I say man? I think I will. There's a lot of things you can do to avoid getting pregnant. Well, what about an accident, Mark? And what about rape, Mark? We can deal with those, but they're not talking about those. They're talking about abortion right up to the last second up to the last second. Now, it doesn't even have to be up to the last second to be viable. You know, Mississippi's law said, and that was the one that was challenged, Mississippi's law said uh, abortion up to 15 weeks after that, effectively no, unless uh, incest and so forth. 
And that's what was challenged. And now you, you have people saying, well, that's okay. We would have agreed to that. But you didn't agree to that. Now, we still have the most radical abortion laws in the world in places like Colorado, California, New York, New Jersey, and others, which have abortion on demand, meaning you want abortion, get abortion, no questions asked. For the radicals, for the Marxists here, they claim that unless you can have abortion right up to the last second, you are controlling their bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, there's two bodies involved here. And the one that hasn't been born yet, they can't speak for themselves. They can't march arm in arm. They can't file briefs. They can't do anything. And I want you to think about what it means to abort a f virtually fully grown baby in the last month, the last week, the last day, the last minute before birth. I want you to think of what that looks like. They have to kill it in the womb. If they deliver the baby and kill it, it's murder. If the body remains inside the womb, it's not murder. It's the same baby. And that baby feels the excruciating pain of pushing a huge needle into its brain through the soft spot on the top of its head, a syringe. The baby feels it as much as it would feel it outside the womb. And when that syringe is drawn and the brains are removed from the baby's head, you think that's a choice? You think that's humane? I think it's disgusting. The vast majority of the American people oppose that. What do the Democrats stand? They support it. 49 Democrats voted for that in the Senate of 50. Every Republican voted against it. Even the weak links in the Republican Party said, no, we can't do that. Huge percentage of the American people oppose this. So we really ought to discuss the terms we're talking about. Abortion is a very broad term. It's a very broad term. And for what reason would you abort a baby that late in the pregnancy? It's just appalling. Go ahead. Now look at this. It's a celebration. A celebration of a protest against the Supreme Court and for abortion. Why would you celebrate abortion? Remember when they said, let's make it rare and infrequent? Do you ever hear that phrase anymore, rare and infrequent? Just watch this. Go ahead. She is not in handcuffs, but she wants you to think she is. Go ahead. Oops, she forgot. Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is one of more than a dozen Democratic lawmakers arrested in Washington today. They were taking part in an abortion rights protest in front of the Supreme Court. And just listen how the media plays along with the language, all that. An abortion rights protest an abortion rights protest, a choice protest, a woman's body protest. There's an awful lot of women who don't agree with these people, an awful lot. And by the way, also notice the language and how schizophrenic these people are. Now we can talk about women's rights and women and women and women. Well, now we have somebody on the Supreme Court who wouldn't define a woman. She needed a, an expert to help her. Um, but uh, it's, it, the whole thing is insanity. Go ahead. We speak with Omar about it in just a moment. But first, Natalie Brand shows us how the arrests uh, come as members of the House are set to vote on a bill that would protect same-sex marriage and interracial marriage. Now, stop there. They're voting on a bill to protect gay marriage, 
an interracial marriage? Those aren't being threatened. Sam Alito in his majority decision explicitly said so. We're not addressing the so-called privacy issue. We're not addressing marriage, same sex or interracial of any kind. So the Democrats are going to pass a bill to protect same sex marriage and interracial marriage. Why is that under threat? No, it's not under threat. Now, the issue of same-sex marriage should have been decided by the states, too. But just to show you how moderate, or even more liberal, this court was in its decision, it wouldn't even go there. It wouldn't even go there. Remember when Barack Obama was campaigning, I think it was 2008, said he opposed same-sex marriage? It's only 14 years ago. He opposed same-sex marriage. But the court imposed it all over the country. It doesn't have the power to do that either, but it did it. And you know what this so-called right-wing court did? It said, we're not touching that precedent. We're not touching that decision. Pretty amazing. Interracial, nobody's brought up interracial. Had a decision a long time ago out of Virginia that said it's a violation of the Equal Protection Clause, the 14th Amendment and the 5th Amendment, frankly. Uh, to prevent people of different races, backgrounds, nationalities, whatever, from getting married. There's no threat there. And so they're doing this for show. They do not want to engage on the realities of what this court did, which left it to the states, which left it to the legislatures and the people of the states. They do not want to engage in the fact that anybody who actually wants an abortion, even in the last second, can get it. They do not want to engage in the fact that this is more than about a choice, that it's about a baby. They don't want to have real serious discussions. When does life begin and are you free to end it at any point? None of that. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.